Welcome to the Jongets Games tutorial for Public Market. In this video, I'll be teaching you the rules to the game as it's being played, and I will be showing about half of a game today. Now, I would like to ask that if you enjoy this video, that you please click the like button for it down below, as well as the subscribe button for the channel. In addition to that, if you'd like to directly support the channel and the creation of videos like this one in the future, then please go to jongetsgames.com support. There you'll find a bunch of ways that you can really help things out, and some of them come with perks like watching some videos early and advertisement free, as well as voting on which of those videos are made. All right, let's now jump into the game. Out here, we have the game fully set up and ready to play for our three different players. Now, before I start, I would like to ask that you please turn on the click on subtitles. I might make mistakes as I'm showing the game, and those will let me put corrections on the screen where you should be able to see them, and I will also put corrections below in the top comment. Well, let's start things off with a brief overview of the game. At the start of the round, players are going to be bidding for the turn order for the rest of the round, and then each player in the new order is going to either go fishing or go to the public market. When you go fishing, you are going to gather one of these large fish tiles, and you will then put it, plus any scrap fish that you might have, into your ice cooler. Now when players do this, they must make sure they can actually fit those pieces in, and you will get bonuses for covering up the shrimp, as well as bonus victory points for surrounding the crab, and you cannot cover up these ice cube spots. So you have to puzzle these fish on your ice chest in order to get the most benefits that you can. Now, during a round, instead of fishing, players can go to the public market. When they do that, they are going to use the fish that they have actually placed into their ice chest, and those fish can go towards public contracts as well as today's catch cards. When you have the right fish in your supply to match up the requirements of the card, you can spend those fish and then gain the effects. For these public contracts, you can place your lighthouse tokens onto these tiles up here, which will give points as well as potentially give other benefits. And when players complete the today's catch cards, they actually take the card, they will get a benefit that's printed on it, and the cannery logos at the bottom of the card will help them in endgame scoring. While at the market, players are also going to gain money based off of how many rows or columns they completely filled in their ice chest. They will then get rid of that ice chest and get a new one from the supply, which they can then fill up by going fishing later on in the game. Now, after we go through 11 rounds in the game, there will be no more fish tiles that we can place out here into the ocean. And at that point, the sun will start to set. We can flip this board over, and then the game plays slightly differently as we can still go fishing. But instead, we can go to the public market one more time. And after that, we will be done with the game. Once all players have visited the public market the final time, we will calculate up our final scores, and the player with the most victory points will be the winner. Now, I will describe the details of how all of these things work while we are playing the game, and at this point, I think it is time to start the game. For this tutorial, we are going to play as the red player over here, and we are also the starting player for the game. Now, let's begin the first round, and the first thing that has to happen is the starting player, who is us, has to bid on turn order. Now, the way this works is we have to place our pawn onto one of the five bidding spots at the top of the board, and this is going to dictate our player order for when we take actions later on in the round. The player who has the farthest right bidding token will get to go first, and then we'll go from right all the way to the left. Now, you'll notice that most of these spots have a price on them, so if we go onto that spot, we have to spend this amount of money, and you will also gain a scrap token of that associated type. So if we went here, we'd spend four money and take this herring scrap token, or we could go there and spend two money and then get this sardine scrap token. And as you can see, this is half the size of the herring. Now, in this case, I think we want to bid onto this spot here, which means we have to spend six money and we did start the game with 12. So we have six money left over at this point. And then we can take one of these cod scrap fish and we will put it adjacent to our ice chest. In the future, when we take a fishing action, that is going to be when we actually place this into our ice chest. So for now, we can just leave it off to the side. Now that we have finished bidding, play is going to move clockwise to the next player, and they can bid. Now, I do want to mention that we are only going to be bidding in clockwise order during the first round of the game. In all subsequent rounds of the game, the player order from the previous round will dictate the bidding order, and I'll show you how that works later on in the tutorial. So, that means the green player does now have to decide how they're going to bid. So let's focus back over here, and the green player can bid on any of these five spots. Even though we are here, that does not stop them from bidding on the COD location. In fact, if there is already a player pawn on the spot you'd like to bid to, you have an extra decision. You can decide to either go after them in turn order by placing to the left, or you could go before them in turn order. But if you do this, you have to give that player one of your money. 
Now, let's say green went over here and then the yellow player decided they also wanted to come to this bidding spot. In that case, they could go here. They could also go in the middle, in which case they'd have to give us one money or they could go all the way to the right and then they just pay one money to the player immediately to their left. So in this case, they would pay the green player one and we actually wouldn't get anything for that. And we would also be going last when it came to actions. Now, obviously that's just an example. That isn't the current situation we are in and the green player has decided they would actually like to go all the way over here to the salmon spot. Now that is going to cost them eight money, which they do have, and then they can take one of the salmon scrap. As you can see, that is a little bit longer than the scrap fish that we picked up for going to this location here. Finally, the yellow player can bid, and once again, they could go to any of the spots other players are and decide to go before or after them. And in this case, they've decided they're okay spending less money than the rest of us have, and they are just going to spend four of their money. And that is going to let them gain one herring scrap tile from the supply. All right, at this point, all players are done bidding, so now we can move into the action phase of the round. The way this works is starting with the rightmost pawn. We are each going to decide if we want to go to the public market or to the fishing dock. Now, no matter what side you pick, you always place your pawn into the lowest available number at that side. And the green player has decided they would like to go to the fishing dock. So they will place their pawn on the one. Now, as you can see at the top of one of these columns, there is a fishing boat. And that is the only column that players can fish from unless they have a special shrimp ability, which I will talk about later. That means the green player can now fish from this column where the boat is, and they have decided they would like to fish this tile. That means they are going to remove it from the ocean, and then they must place this into their ice chest along with any scrap tiles they have next to their ice chest. Now, as you can see, there are three different icons on the ice chest. The first are these ice cubes, and you are never allowed to cover these spots up. The second icon are these shrimp spots right here. There's always three of them, and if you cover all three of the shrimp spots, then you will unlock a shrimp ability, which I will talk about in more detail later. The final icon is this crab, and you are allowed to cover the crab up with a tile if you want. However, if when you go to the market, you have completely surrounded the crab with either fish tiles or these ice cube tiles that are already there, then you actually gain a benefit of gathering one crab, and these will be worth extra victory points once the game is over. So you certainly want to try and leave these crabs face up, you want to try and cover the shrimp, and you must make sure that you never cover up the ice cubes. Obviously, when you place these down, you are not allowed to overlap the edge of the ice chest, and you are also not allowed to overlap the specific tiles on top of each other. Now, in this case, it looks like the green player wants to place that tile like this. As you can see, they are avoiding the ice cubes. They've also covered up one of their shrimp icons, and they have surrounded one, two, three, four of the spots around this crab. Next up, they have this salmon scrap tile to place, and they're going to put it over here, and just like that, this crab is fully surrounded because, once again, the ice cubes count for that surrounding. Now, they only gain this crab when they go to the market, but they are not allowed to move these tiles around once they are placed, so they are set up to gain that crab later on when they eventually do go to the market. Now, at the same time a player is adding fish tiles into their ice chest, they also must update the tracks on their board. As you can see, there is a track for the sardines, herring, cod, and salmon. And every time you add one of that type of fish into your ice chest, you simply slide the tracker up to show how many are in your ice chest. And that way it's very easy to tell your count compared to the other players as you are trying to figure out your plans. In this case, the green player has added two salmon, so they can increase this twice. And they have also added one cod, so they can increase this once. And it is worth noting that at this point, if they have not added a tile into their ice chest because they didn't want to or they couldn't, they could simply discard that tile from the game and gain three money from the supply. Also, if you have maxed out your track and you have a tile with that type of fish, then you are not allowed to add that fish into your ice chest and you are then forced to sell that tile by discarding it in order to get three money. While we are on the topic of discarding tiles for three money, I do want to mention that you can only do that while there are still tiles in this bag. Obviously, there are a ton of tiles at the moment, but as we keep playing through the game, eventually this tile bag will empty, and at that point, players can still discard tiles or might even be forced to, but they don't gain three money for it anymore. The final thing I'd like to mention about the fishing action is the fact that some of these tiles have shell icons on them, and these have no effect when playing the base game of Public Market, but they do have an effect if you are playing with the Shallow Waters expansion, and I won't be describing the details of how that works in this video.
All right, green is now done with their fishing action, and that means we can come back to the bidding row, and the next pawn, going from the right to the left, can take an action. Now that is us, so this means we can now go fishing and place onto the two spot here, or we could go to the public market and place onto the six spot, because that is the lowest number on that half. Now when we go to the public market, we actually use the fish that we have already gathered in a couple of different ways, and we obviously have not picked up any fish beyond that one cod, so I don't think that makes sense. Let's definitely go fishing. So let's focus back out on the ocean, and as you can see, we only have four tile options available to us because green decided to go earlier in player order, and they already took one of the tiles. Fortunately for us, they did not take the tile that I was particularly interested in, and that's this one here. So let's focus over here on our ice chest, and the reason I liked this tile is because if we orient it like this, we have not only dodged this ice cube, but we have also covered up one of the shrimp, and we have filled in a couple of the spots around this crab. Now there's just one, two, three, four more spots that we would like to fill in in order to score that crab when we go to the public market. Now we do have to place this cod down, and we could use this to try and fill some of these in, or we could just place it like that, which will cover up another one of those shrimp icons, and I think that is probably what we want to do at this moment. Now we can track the fish that we just caught. That is going to be one cod. We also have one herring. There is one salmon there, and one sardine. That's finished our fishing action, so now the yellow player can go, and it's not too surprising to see that they also want to go fishing to add some more fish into their ice chest before they end up going to the market. So they can choose from these three remaining tiles, and they are going to take this one. And they've decided to place it like that, so they have filled in three spaces around their crab, and they've covered up one of their shrimp. They do have to place this herring tile down as well, and they've decided to place it all the way over there to cover up that shrimp icon. They have just one more showing, and as soon as all three of these are filled in, that player will gain a shrimp benefit, which again, I will describe in detail later on in the video. Now they can track their fish. They caught two herring. They also caught one sardine and one salmon. Now that everyone has taken an action, we can move into the repopulate phase of the round, where we are going to take the rest of the fish tiles from the current column with the boat, and these are going to be removed from the game. We can put them back into the box to remind ourselves that they do not go back into the bag, and that's important because once we have emptied this bag of fish tiles, that is going to signify that the game is coming to a close. Now I'll talk about the details of how the game ends and how we do final scoring later on, and now what we have to do is randomly pull out tiles from this bag and repopulate this row so that there are five tiles showing. After that, we can now move into the navigation phase of the round, and at this point, the player whose pawn is farthest to the right can decide where this boat is going to be for the next round of the game. Now, there are four columns this boat can be in front of, and in this case, the yellow player can decide where to move the boat, and they don't even have to move it, they could leave it where it is, or navigate it to the top of any of the other columns. Obviously, this is an important decision, because the location of that boat will dictate where everyone can fish in the next round of the game. After considering the options, they want to move the ship to this column here. After that, the round has officially come to an end, and we can now start the next round of the game. The first thing that happens is bidding, and the bidding order is dictated by the order in which these pawns were placed down to the bottom. We begin with the leftmost pawn, and that player decides where to bid, then we move to the next pawn, and we keep doing that until every player has decided on their bid. So, let's start bidding again, and the green player will place their bid first. After considering their options, they are going to bid onto the herring spot, which is going to cost them four money, and they only had four money, so they are now out of money entirely, and then they can take one herring scrap tile and put it next to their ice chest. Next up, we get to bid, and currently we have six money available. That means we could go to the herring spot and spend one extra money to go before the green player, although that extra money would go to the green player, and I don't love that idea. Or we could just spend our six money and go on the cod spot, and I think let's go ahead and do that. So we can spend all six of our money, and we now have no money, and we can gain a cod scrap tile. Finally, the yellow player can bid, and they have eight money total. Now, they could go to the uh, cod or herring spot and pay one money to one of us to go before the other player, but they've decided since they have the eight money and having salmon around is a good thing, they're going to go all the way over here. That means they're going to spend the last of their money and no players have any money now, and then the yellow player will gain a salmon scrap tile. All right, bidding is done, so now we can take actions and the yellow player gets to go first. They've decided to go fishing, and they must take a tile underneath the boat. 
Now remember, the yellow player decided where this boat went, so it seems pretty obvious there must be a tile in here they like, and this is that tile. So they can catch it, and then they must add it to their ice chest. Now as you can see, when they flip it like that, it'll fit beautifully in their ice chest. That has fully surrounded their crab, and it has also covered up their third shrimp icon. The moment that happens, they must immediately place their shrimp bonus cube onto one of these different bonuses. As you can see, there are four listed on their board, and every player has the same four. The way this works is they must place their cube into the red area of one of these four shrimp bonuses, and then at some point in the future, they can take that bonus by sliding the cube over to show that they then used it. Now, once they cover up three shrimp icons on a new ice chest, they will be forced to move this cube to a different shrimp bonus, and that means if you never actually utilized that bonus, you are still forced to move it, so you definitely want to slide this cube over to gain that bonus before you gain another shrimp bonus, if at all possible. So, yellow has to choose one of these four, and let's talk about the specifics of these bonuses. The first one says that while fishing, you can place the newly caught fish tile into your personal cooler instead of placing it into your ice chest. So, for example, if they had this shrimp bonus, and then in the future they fished this tile, they could use that bonus, and then instead of placing this into the ice chest, they simply place it off to the side. Now, this is different from placing it over here with the scraps, because we did technically just place this into a cooler, it was just our personal one instead of our main ice chest. What that means is we will never place this token onto our ice chest, and we will immediately gain all of the fish that show up on that token, and in the future, when we get rid of this ice chest during a market action, we will also get rid of this token here. The next bonus says you can simply slide this over to take any one scrap tile that is currently available above the board. If there are no tiles of the specific type that you want, then you have to choose a different one, so you might have to time this right based off of how many of these tiles have been taken. The next option says you can fish anywhere. Now you use this when you do a fishing action, and then for that one action, you can take a fish tile from anywhere in the ocean, not necessarily from directly underneath the boat. The final shrimp bonus option is very simple. You just slide that cube over to take five money from the bank. So the yellow player does have to choose which one of these they want to go with. And they've decided they like the flexibility of being able to take a scrap tile of their choice at some point in the future. The last thing yellow has to do is update their catch tracker. It looks like they caught two more salmon. They also caught a cod and one more sardine. Well, it looks like it's now time for us to go, and I think we want to go fishing again before we go to the market. So let's take a tile from the ocean, and we must take a tile that's currently underneath the boat. Now of these options, I think this one is the best. And the reason for that is because if we flip it over and orient it like this, we can place it just like that into our ice chest, and now we have filled most of the holes around this crab up. Now we have to place this cod down as well, and we could place it up there. That would let us cover the last shrimp icon, which means we would get a shrimp bonus. Another option is we could simply place the cod like that in order to fully surround this crab. Now I think at this point we do want that shrimp bonus. So we have to choose a shrimp bonus option, and I think we'll do the same thing that yellow did. This will let us gain a scrap tile of our choice, and let's hold off on using this, because we're not sure which scrap tile we want. Ultimately, we just want one that will fit here, so it's going to be anything but salmon. But specifically, the difference between cod, herring, and sardines might be important based off of the various cards we're going to try to fulfill when we go to the market. And let's hold off until right before we go to the market to figure out what scrap we're going to take. Now at this point, we of course have to update our catch tracker for the tiles that we just added. It looks like we added two cod, we also added one sardine, and one herring. Alright, it's now time for the green player to take a turn, and they've decided they want to do the first public market action of the game. The first thing they have to do for the market action is make sure they have placed all of their tiles into their ice chest. They've decided to place this tile like that, and that is a herring, so they can slide this up to track that. After that, they have to check to see if they gain the crab bonus. Now again, that will happen if the one crab in their ice chest is fully surrounded by fish tiles or the ice cubes, and that is the case with all eight of those being full. That means they can take one of their crabs, and then they can place this into the crabs caught area of their board. Now each player can catch up to five crabs throughout the game, and at the end of the game they will get victory points based off of the number of crabs caught. Just one will be worth one point, and that goes all the way up to 15 points if you have caught your maximum of five. 
After that, green can go to the market and complete up to two cards. Now, as you can see, there are two different kinds of cards. There are public contract cards up here, and then today's catch stacks down there. Now, these public contract cards are dealt out at the start of the game, and they are dealt into specific columns. You'll notice both of these are for column one, these are for column two, then three, and then four. Now, these public contract cards will not change as we go through the game. And if players want to complete one of these contracts, they have to spend the indicated fish on the card by moving their tracks down on the board, and then they are going to place a lighthouse token onto one of these tiles at the top. Now it looks like the green player is not going to be doing that, so we'll talk about the details of that in a little bit, but instead green is going to focus on the today's catch cards. Much like the contracts, in order to complete these, a player needs to spend the associated number of fish by sliding down their tracks. Now, unlike the contracts, when you complete the today's catch cards, you actually remove them from the stack. And again, you can complete up to two cards total. So that could be two public contracts, two today's catch cards, or one and one. In this case, Green wants to complete this today's catch card. And as you can see, they have to spend one cod and one salmon to do so. They do that by sliding down the tracks, so they will slide their cod track down to zero, and their salmon track will go down to one. Now, after that, they are going to gain a benefit that's printed on this card. As you can see, this shows a gear and a pink star in the middle. Well, that icon matches up with this one on the player board, and what that means is they can slide that gear up once. Now what that means is they have effectively gained a permanent salmon for the rest of the game. And at the end of every public market step, they're going to reset their fish token up to that level. So as you can see, they're always going to end the public market steps with one salmon that they can then use in future market actions. Now I would like to point out that you can only upgrade the gear for salmon twice, but you can upgrade the other gears even more than that. And again, you gain these upgrades from various cards and effects when you go to the public market. Now there's one other symbol on this card, and that is the cannery logo. Now there are four different canneries in the game, and when the game is over, players are going to score bonus points for their sets of different cannery icons. Now for each of these sets, they will gain one point for the first type of icon, two points for the second, three points for the third, and four points for the fourth, and all of those are additive. So if you have a set of three different icons, then that is going to be worth six points to you, and if you have another set of two different icons, then that will be worth three. Now this is their first cannery icon, so that means effectively they have one set with one type, so that is currently worth one point to them at the end of the game. So the green player has finished one card, and remember they can complete up to two cards total with this public market action. Now at the moment they have one herring left and one salmon, but unfortunately for them none of the public cards or today's catch cards needs that specific set of fish. You'll notice that this today's catch stack actually is a face down card, and that will be flipped up at the end of this market phase. So the green player is only going to complete one of the potential two cards they could do. And now it's time for them to sell their remaining fish. As you can see below these tracks, it tells you how much money they will get for each. For every two sardines you sell, you gain one. For every one herring and one cod, you get one. And for every salmon you sell at this point, you get two money. Now they have one salmon and one herring, so they are going to gain three money for their excess fish. After that, it's then time for them to get a payout for their ice chest. Now what they have to do is count the number of complete rows they have on their board and the ice cubes and crabs count, and then they can count the number of complete columns they have, and whichever of those is a higher number, they will multiply that number by three. Now that is the amount of money they will get, and in this case you'll notice they have zero complete columns and two complete rows, so that means two is greater than zero, and they can multiply those two rows by three money, and that means they they will gain six money as a payout. Now what this means is you definitely want to complete rows and columns when you are filling in your ice chest, but you want to prioritize one over the other because if you end with two complete rows and two complete columns, then you will get a payout of six money, whereas if you end with four complete rows and zero complete columns, you are going to gain 12 money as a payout. So focusing on just rows or columns is something to keep in mind. After this, green can now clear out their ice chest. Any of their fishing tiles are going to be placed back into the box so they are permanently out of the game, and all scraps will be placed into the supply, and then this ice chest will also be removed from the game. After that, we have to reveal new today's catch cards so that there are four available, unless of course there are none left in the stack, in which case there will be less than four as options. Now at this point you may have noticed that the top cards here are blue and the bottom ones are red and the main difference there is the blues tend to give more gears and the red cards tend to give more cannery icons. 
Next up, the green player needs to draw a new ice chest, and you'll notice that they have different sides on them, and they can choose which side they want to go to. Now, it's worth noting they would not actually draw a new chest if there were currently no tiles left in this ocean bag, because in that case, the game will be coming to an end, and I'll talk about the details of that later on in the tutorial. It looks like they've decided to go with this side of the ice chest, and the final thing they can do is update their catch tracker so that all of their white fish tokens are at the same level as their gear tokens. Well, it looks like we've all taken our actions, so now it's time to repopulate the ocean. And we will do that by removing all of the tiles under the boat. And then we can deal out five new ones. Next up, the player whose token is farthest to the right can navigate the boat, moving it to any new column or leaving it where it is. And the green player has decided they'd like the boat to be in the far right column. Before we end the round, I just realized that the yellow player actually forgot to put their scrap salmon into their ice chest. I was intending to have it go right over here, I just forgot to do that on screen, so that is where they would have put it. Well, it's now time for the next round, and the yellow player can start the bid off. Currently, they have zero money, though, so they must go onto the no scrap spot, because all of the rest of the spots cost money. After that, we can bid, and we also have zero money. And you'll notice over here at the no scrap spot, there is no way to spend money to go in front of another player like these other locations. So even if we had one money, we would be forced to go to the left. We don't have any money, though, so it looks like the first two bids are pretty obvious there. And now it's time for the green player to go. Now, they currently have nine money to spend because they did go to the market, and they've decided to spend four of it to bid on this location. That is going to gain them one herring scrap token. After spending the four money, it's now time for actions, and the green player gets to go first. We're not surprised to see them go fishing, considering they don't have anything in their ice chest right now. Now, when they fish, they have to choose from underneath the boat, and they were the ones to put the boat over here, and when they look at the options, this is the tile that they were particularly interested in. The reason for that is because it fits nicely over here, covering up one of their shrimp tokens, and it also covers up one, two, three, four of the spots around their crab. After that, they do have to place this herring from the side of their board, and they're just going to put it over there to cover up another shrimp token, so they just have one more to cover up before they can take a shrimp bonus. Now they can update their trackers. They added one salmon and two herring. Green is done with their turn, and now yellow can go, and they currently have no money and an ice chest that is pretty full of fish, so they've decided they are going to go to the public market. Now, before they proceed with this action, they've decided to use their shrimp bonus. Remember, the one they selected lets them take any scrap tile of their choice, and they have to immediately add it into their chest, and they have decided to use that to take one salmon. This salmon is going to be placed right over there in their chest, and that is going to increase their catch tracker by one, since they now have four salmon total in their ice chest. At this point, if they had any other tokens off to the side, they would have to add them, but they don't. And now they can check for their crab bonus. Their crab is indeed fully surrounded by tiles or ice cubes, so they can place this crab into their caught area. Next up, the yellow player can complete up to two cards at the market, and they are going to start by completing this public contract. As you can see, in order to do that, they have to spend one sardine, one herring, one cod, and one salmon. Looking back at their trackers, they can do this, although that was their only cod. After that, they can now take one of their lighthouse tokens, and they can place it onto an empty spot on the scoring tile that is associated with the column where they completed that public contract, or they could place this onto the collections tile up here. You can place onto this tile no matter which column you went into. Now this tile up here will immediately gain you three money when you place your token onto one of these spots, and it will also give you one of the associated cannery icons for endgame scoring. So they could do one of those, or they could place this token onto any empty spot on this scoring tile, because they did complete a contract in the first column. Now you'll notice there are numbers underneath each of these spots, and those are victory points that you get at the end of the game. So if they place this right here, that would be worth one victory point, and they would gain the bonus in that icon. Whereas if they went over there, that would be worth five points, and obviously there is no icon underneath that spot. Now it's worth noting that once you place a lighthouse token, it is never moved for the rest of the game, and will block that spot for all future contract completions. So the yellow player has to make a decision here, and they are going to place on this tile. Now let's look at these icons. This first one is similar to what we've seen already. It shows the blue triangle and a gear, and that is the sardine icon. Now you'll notice this scoring tile also shows sardines on it. 
And what this means is by going there, they would get three points at the end of the game, and they would increase their sardine gear once, which means they would start with one sardine at the end of each market round. The next option right here says they would gain three points at the end of the game, and they would immediately gain one of the sardine scrap tokens, which would go next to their ice chest. Finally, this icon says they could immediately take any of the today's catch cards that are currently face up, and they can complete it without spending the fish, and they will get the bonuses of that card, and that card would not count against the maximum of two cards they can complete by spending fish during this public market action. After considering these options, they think that is going to be the best one for them. It is only worth one point at the end of the game, but again, they can now automatically complete one of the today's catch cards. When we look down here, this is the card they would like to complete. It normally would cost four fish, but again, they don't have to spend any of those with this scoring bonus. Now, the benefit is going to increase their gear for their herring and their cod once, and it does not give them any cannery icons for endgame scoring. So they can push each of those gears up, and they will now automatically catch a herring and a cod at the end of each market phase for the rest of the game. Well, they finished that public contract, and as you can see, that does stay out there for the rest of the game, so more people can do that. Although, the sooner you do contracts in these columns, the more options you will have for actually placing your scoring token down. Well, the yellow player can complete up to one more card, and they currently have three salmon, one herring, and one sardine. With that in mind, they are going to complete this today's catch card as their second card. That is going to cost them two salmon which they do have, and then that will increase their cod production by one, so they can move this up, and now they are going to start with two cod at the end of each public market action. Now this does have a cannery icon, which is going to be worth points to them at the end of the game. At this point, yellow is done completing cards because they have completed two of them. One was a public contract, and one was that today's catch. Now they have to sell all of their excess fish. This one salmon will be worth two money to them, and this herring is going to be worth one. But then unfortunately they have one sardine left and they need two sardine to gain one money, so they are not going to gain anything for that. So overall they gained three money for selling their excess fish. And now they can take their payout for their ice chest. As you can see, they have ended with three complete columns and three complete rows, and that isn't the most efficient way they could have done it. Again, if you focus on rows or columns, maybe you can get even more money, but in this case, the highest number is three between those two, so they are going to get a payout of nine money. After that, they can discard their ice chest and send all of the scrap tokens back to the supply. Next up, they have to reveal new today's catch cards. And then they will gain a new ice chest. And after that, they can update their tracker. They are going to start with two cod and one herring. Well, yellow is done with their turn, and that means we can go. And I do think we should go to the market. We have no money and quite a few fish in our ice chest already. So let's go ahead and liquidate those. Now before we do anything else, let's use our shrimp bonus to gain a scrap token of our choice, and let's actually gain a sardine. This is the smallest one, but the reason we are doing this is because it is the right size to fully surround this crab, and that is going to gain us our third sardine. Now obviously a cod or a herring would also have fit there, but with this third sardine, I think we are set up to do a really good public market action. So we can move on with our turn, and we will gain a crab because this is fully surrounded. And then we can complete up to two cards. We have a bunch of fish, which does give us some options. And one of those did involve completing this or that one there. We could have done either. And I probably would have done it if this option wasn't already taken by the yellow player. Now, technically, we do have what we need to complete a contract in the second row. That could be this contract here. And we could then fill that spot in and get two points and automatically complete one of these things. But that would be the only card that we would complete. I suppose if we did that, we would essentially get two cards, one from the bonus there and one from completing this. Uh, but another option available to us now is we could just complete these two cards here because we did take that third sardine. Uh, that third sardine was necessary to complete this one too. So taking that for the shrimp bonus opened up a couple of good options for us. Now, if we go with a contract route, that is going to be worth a couple more points than if we go with the double today's catch route, because you'll notice neither of these have cannery icons. But the game is so early, I think we're going to go for this, because that is going to give us more gear increases, which will give us a long-term benefit as we continue throughout the game. So for this one, we have to spend one sardine as well as two herring, and then this one needs two sardine and then one cod. Now, after that, we are going to increase our sardine production twice, 
and then we will increase our cod production once and herring production once. And now we will end this public market phase with four fish that we can then use in future public market phases to then maybe start getting some of those scoring tiles done. Now we can set these cards off to the side. And as you can see, we still have a salmon and two cod left over. And this is another reason why I thought going this route was pretty good because it used less of our fish overall. So let's sell our excess fish. We will gain two money for that salmon and then one money each for our two cod. So that is four money total. After that, we can get our payout for the ice chest. We completed one column and it looks like two rows. So two is the bigger number. And that means we are going to gain six more money. Next up, we can get rid of this ice chest and send all of the scrap back to the supply. Then let's gain a new ice chest and we'll put it like this. And we also have to reveal new today's catch cards. Now this is the first red today's catch card. And as you can see, it does have two of those cannery icons on it. The final thing that we have to do is gain fish up to our tool levels. So that means we gain two sardines, one herring, and one cod. All right, our turn is done. So now we can move on to the repopulate phase. We're gonna get rid of all of the tiles underneath the boat, and then we can deal five more out from the ocean bag. Next up, it's time to navigate, and our token is farthest to the right, so we can decide where this boat token is going to be. Now, this is our current ice chest, and right off the bat, I think there are a couple of good options in the current column where it's at. This one right here could go like that around the crab. It wouldn't cover up any shrimp, but it would certainly be good for the crab. And then this one could also go something like this, although that does not necessarily cover up the shrimp, although that would actually be an even better move. So each of those would be pretty good for us. And honestly, our ice chest is so open that we can make use of all of these tokens. So I think we're going to leave the ship right over here. The round is over, and before we move on, I'd like to make a slight correction about something I said earlier. When you discard these ice chests, they are not removed from the game. They are placed instead to the bottom of this stack. Well, I think it is now time for us to talk about how this game is going to end. At this point, we have completed three rounds in the game, and once we have completed the 11th round, there will no longer be any tiles left in the bag. At that moment, we are going to move to the sunset part of the game, and when we do that, we are going to flip this board over to the sunset side. When we do that, we will then place the player tokens on the fishing side over here in the relative order from where they were, and then we will use this board for the rest of the game. Now, there are a couple of changes, and the first is that the price for these four bidding spots has gone up, and you'll notice that there is not a zero-cost, no-scrap option anymore. Instead, there is a new option over here, which says you take any scrap when you go onto the spot, and then you go home. Now, I do want to point out that you have to spend three money to a person that you go in front of on the bidding spot when you go home. Now, once all of these bids are done, we, of course, start at the right and work our way left, and every player who went to the home spot is going to stop by the market on their way home and do a standard market action. Once they finish that market action, they will be done for the game, which means they won't place any more bids or take any more actions. Once all players who bid for the home spot are done, every other player will be forced to do a fishing action, and this works the same way as normal, except for the fact that from this point on, new tiles will not be added into the ocean because the draw bag will be empty. Now that means when we get to the end of the round, we are going to clear off all of the tiles under the boat as normal, but then not add new tiles, and then we will move into a new round where there might be less players in the game because some might have gone home, and we will bid on the sunset board as normal, and of course when you go fishing later on, there will be less and less options available. Now it is worth noting that there is still a navigate action, and if the boat is over a column with no fish in it, then the rightmost player must move the boat to a column that does have at least one fish tile. Now play is going to continue until all players have gone home, and if there aren't any fish tiles left in the ocean, then players will be forced to go to the home bidding spot on the sunset board. Once everyone has gone home, there will be no more pawns on this board, and the game will be officially over. At that point, it will be time for final scoring. The first thing players will score are these scoring tiles over here, and they will gain points equal to the numbers underneath each of their lighthouse scoring tokens. After that, players will gain one point for every three money they still have in their personal area, and then players can calculate scores for their cannery icons. Remember, they can gain these icons on the cards they have acquired, as well as over here by having a lighthouse on the collections tile. 
Now, players are making different sets of icons, and for each set, they are going to get a variable number of points. If there is one icon in that set, it will be worth one point. If there are two, it will be worth three points. Three icons will be worth six points, and four icons will be worth ten points. Finally, players will gain points for their caught crabs. If they have one, they will get one point. Two is worth three points. Three are worth six. Four are worth ten. And five are worth fifteen points. And again, it's worth noting, players are not allowed to catch more than five crabs. Once everyone has added their points up, the player with the most points will be the winner, and if there is a tie, then the tied player who has the most today's catch cards will break the tie in their favor, and if there is still a tie, then the players will share in the victory. Now obviously we are not at the sunset part of the game just yet, so let's go ahead and reset this to where we were. And now we are ready for the fourth round of the game. Now I think what I'm going to do is play through a couple more rounds so that you can see a little bit more of how the game flows, even though up to this point I do believe I've taught most of the rules. So the bidding round is going to start with the green player, and they've decided to go to the four cost spot, so they can spend their four money and then they will gain one herring scrap tile. Next up, the yellow player can bid, and they are going to spend eight money in order to pick up a salmon scrap tile. After that, we can perform the last bid, and we do have 10 money. That means if we really wanted to go first in this round, we could spend 8 to the bank and 1 to the yellow player in order to go here. Although I would only do that if we were really desperate to go first, because obviously I don't like giving money to opponents. Now if we wanted, we could go here and get a salmon tile and go after the yellow player without giving them an extra money, and that would not be terrible considering we know there are at least two of these fishing tiles that would work pretty well for our current ice chest. Now of course we don't have to go to the salmon spot because that is more expensive, and we do currently only have 10 money, so that means if we went here we'd spend 8 of that, leaving us with just 2 left over for the next round, and I do think we're going to want to fish a couple of rounds in a row before we go back to the market. With that in mind, maybe we should save a little bit of money and go to the cod spot. Uh, we could go here, that would spend 4 money and give 1 money to the green player, which would be 5 total, but I am okay spending 1 extra money so that we're not giving a money to the green player. So we can spend our six money and we have four money left over that we could use to bid up to the herring spot next round if that ends up being something we want to do. We can also take one cod scrap token. Bidding is done, so now we can take actions and the yellow player is going to go fishing. After considering these options, they would like to fish this tile and then they're going to place it like that into their ice chest. They do also have to place this salmon down into their ice chest, and there are a few ways they could do this that would help them. If they did that, they would be covering up their second to last shrimp spot, and they could also do something like this or that in order to help make some columns and try to surround their crab. I suppose they could do this, that way they've filled in a couple of the spots, and then they could easily fit a herring or cod scrap token in here before they go to the market to try and complete rows. I suppose they could also just put a sardine there in order to try and catch that crab. I think this is what yellow is going to go with, and now they can increase their salmon track twice, their cod track once, and their herring track once. Yellow is done, so we can go, and I think let's go fishing. And I think the tile we want is this one. This is one of the two that I mentioned would work out well for us. The other one was taken by the yellow player. So we can place this onto our board, and we can do something like this, or that, I suppose. Although, unfortunately, that has not covered up any of the shrimp, but we are just one spot away from fully catching this crab. I suppose something else we could do is this. That would only help with one space towards catching the crab, but it would cover up two of the shrimp spots, and we could cover the third shrimp spot up right now in order to immediately unlock a new shrimp bonus. You know what? I think this is what we're going to do. That means we have to move this cube to a new red spot. We cannot leave it in the same bonus that we already took. Now the two that are really calling out to me are at the bottom here. Going down here would just get us five money, which could be great for flexibility, but this one is also pretty great. It says that during a fishing action, we could take a fish from anywhere, not necessarily the column with the boat. Now, we are not going to be the player who gets to decide where the boat is in the next round, and I do think we want to fish again in the next round. And I've noticed this tile in the ocean is pretty great for our current situation. We could place it like this, which would almost completely surround the crab, and would also help us towards potentially getting a bunch of these different rows completed. Now, we don't know if this will be available or not, because we aren't in control of that. So I think let's go for this one so that we have added flexibility for fishing in the future. Now it's worth noting, we don't have to use this when we go fishing, so if the boat goes over this column and we end up being able to take it, we could just save this for another time in the future when we want that flexibility. 
Well, let's go ahead and track these fish. We gained two more cod, one salmon, and one more sardine. We are done, which means green can go, and they are also going to go fishing. And they've decided to fish this tile. This is going to fit really nicely into their ice chest. As you can see, that has fully surrounded their crab. And then they've decided they are going to place this herring right like that. This means they have covered up all their shrimp, and they can immediately take a shrimp bonus. And they've decided to go down here onto the bonus, which lets them take five money. Now they could do this at any time during their turns, and they figure there's no reason not to do it right now, so they can immediately activate that in order to gain five more money. Next up, they do have to update their tracks. It looks like they added one herring, as well as one salmon, and one sardine. Well, we're all done taking actions, so now it's time to repopulate the ocean. These tiles in the current column will be removed from the game, and then we can deal five more out randomly from the bag. After that, the green player can navigate the boat, which means they can move it to any of these spots. And you know what? They've decided that they really like one of the tiles that just came up, so they're going to leave the boat here once again. All right, the next round of the game can begin with the yellow player bidding. And they currently only have four money, so that means the maximum they could bid is up to here on the herring spot. After considering their options, they are going to bid on the sardine spot, so that is going to cost them two money, and they will gain one sardine scrap token. After that, we can bid, and we have four money, and I do think that I would like to get a one by 2 size piece, so let's go and bid on the herring spot, which means we're going to spend all four of our money, and then we will gain one herring scrap token. After that, green can bid, and they have six money now, considering they just used that shrimp bonus to gain five more. Now, with that in mind, they are still just going to be spending two money. They are going to go to the sardine spot, and it appears they are just fine going last in the action round. They could go before the yellow player, which means they'd have to pay yellow one money, and they've decided that is not something they need to do. So, they can spend two money, and then gain one sardine scrap token. All right, we're done with bids, and that means we now get to go, and I do think we want to fish. And considering the boat did not move onto the column that I really wanted, let's use this shrimp bonus that lets us fish from anywhere in the ocean. So we can focus over here, and this is the tile that I had my eyes set on. There are these new ones that just got dealt out, but I think this one is better for our current situation. So let's fish this tile up, and then place it like that onto our board, and then we can place this herring like that, and this means we have three completed columns, and we have fully surrounded this crab. This also means that we have caught one more salmon, one more sardine, and two more herring. Well, we are just about done with our fishing action. However, before we move on, since we used this special shrimp action that let us fish from anywhere, there is now a gap in a column where the boat isn't. Now what we have to do is take the top tile from the column where the boat is and refill that spot, and technically you do this immediately after you take a tile from somewhere else in the ocean. All right, the yellow player can go, and they want to fish. And they have decided to catch this fish tile here. Then they can place this into their ice chest, and as soon as they do that, they have covered up their last shrimp icon, so they can immediately take a shrimp bonus. And they have decided they would like some more money, so they'll go over here and then immediately use that bonus to take five money. Now they do have to add this sardine token in, and there is a perfectly shaped one-by-one -one spot next to that crab, so they'll place it right over there. And then they can update their tracks by increasing their salmon once, their herring once, and their sardines once. Yellow is done, so now green can go, and they would like to go fishing. That means they can choose one of these three tiles, and this is the one that they had their heart set on. Now that's the entire reason they put the boat on top of this column, and they could tell that none of their opponents had space in their ice chests to even fit this tile. That's the reason green decided they didn't need to bid high. They could go low in the player order because they figured other people were unlikely to take this. Of course, somebody could have taken this and then simply sold it to the bank for three money, but that's something the green player thought was unlikely. So they can fish this tile, and it is going to fit perfectly into their ice chest, and now they have just one sardine token left, and it will also fit perfectly into that spot there. This is another reason they bid low, because they did not want a larger cod or herring tile, because it wouldn't even fit. Now they can update their tracks. That is going to gain them one salmon, one cod, and one sardine. Well, we're done with actions, so now we can repopulate the ocean. These tiles will go away, and now we can see five more from the bag. After that, the green player can navigate, and they're going to move the boat on top of this column. 
All right, that has finished the round. And now it's time to bid once again. Now, I do think we want to go to the market this round, but there's really not much to think about as far as the bidding is concerned because we currently have no money. So we have to go up to the no scrap spot. And now the yellow player can bid and they have seven money. So they certainly have some options. After considering their options, they are going to bid onto the four money spot and that's going to get them a herring scrap tile. They do, of course, have to spend four money for that. Finally, the green player can bid, and if they really wanted to be able to go to the market before other players, they could spend some extra money, but at the moment, their ice chest is completely full, so if they gain any scrap tokens, then they'll be forced to sell those back for three money each, instead of putting it into their ice chest. Now, three money is not bad, but they would of course have to spend two money to go to the sardine spot to then gain that one money back. Uh, that being said, if they did that, they would still gain one money overall, compared to going over here, which would gain them nothing. So they they are going to go to the sardine spot. This means they can spend two money for that and then gain a sardine token. And now that bidding is done, the yellow player can take the first action of the round. After considering it, they are going to go to the market, which does mean they first have to place these scrap tokens and they're going to put this here. And that's not too surprising considering they have now surrounded this crab. So that means they have caught the crab and they can place that onto their board. That right there increased their endgame scoring for crabs from 1 to 3, so that was a 2-point play. Now it's time for them to go to the market and use up to two of these cards. Now they've decided to start here in column 1. This requires them to spend 2 herring and 2 cod. And they do indeed have those fish to spend. Now they can place their scoring token down into either this tile, because that's the column they activated with the contract, or onto this collection tile up here. This does give a cannery icon for endgame scoring and three money, whereas over here, they could get three points and then increase their sardine production by one or just take a sardine token. And if they took that token, they actually put it next to their ice chest so they could use it in a future ice chest, but not the current one that they are using at the market. They could also just place right here and gain five victory points, and they've decided they're going to go for it. That means between these two tokens, they've already gained six victory points. They've completed one card and now they can complete another and they've decided to go for this today's catch card. That is going to cost them their one sardine as well as their one cod and this is going to increase their sardine production by one and it will give them that cannery icon and up to this point they did not have that icon just yet. So that means their set just went from one different type to two different types and the second one is going to be plus two points. So that icon right there is effectively worth two victory points to them and if they get a third different type for that set that would be worth three points. They're done with cards and now they can sell their excess fish. They have one herring, which will be worth one money, and they have three salmon that they did not use. That means they are going to get two money for each of those, and all told, they are going to gain seven more money for their excess fish. After that, they can get paid out for their ice chest. As you can see, they have one completed column and three completed rows, so they are going to go with the rows. That will be three times three, or nine more money that they gain. After that, this ice chest can go to the bottom of the stack, and then they can add these scrap tokens to the supply, and then the fishing tiles will be removed from the game. Next up, they will gain a new ice chest from the supply, and this is the side they'd like to go with. And the next thing they have to do is refresh the today's catch cards. The final thing yellow has to do is increase their fish up to their tool levels. They are going to gain two cod, one herring, and one sardine. Yellow is done, and that means green can go, and they are also going to go to the market. And the first thing they have to do is place this scrap tile. Now, technically, they could cover up that crab, but they don't think they want to do that. Instead, they're going to sell this to the boat captain and gain three money from the bank. That means they have five money total, and now they can catch their crab. As you can see, it is fully surrounded, so they are going to gain this, and they'll put it onto their board. After that, green can go to the market and pick up cards, and they have decided they are still going to avoid these contracts. These are worth a decent amount of points, but instead they are going to complete both of these today's catch cards. This first one is going to cost one herring as well as one salmon, and the second one will cost them one sardine, one cod, and another salmon. Now, as you can see, this one will increase their salmon production by one, 
and that brings their salmon production to its maximum. That means in the future, if they took a card that would increase their salmon production, they would get nothing for that effect. Now that is certainly great, and if you look over here when they place these down, these are their second, third, and fourth different types of icons. Remember, the first one in a set is worth one point, the second is two, the third is three, and the fourth is four points. So that means by taking these two cards, they just gained nine points overall, and they have completed this set. So obviously they are going to work on future sets, but having nine points from a set at this point in the game will hopefully make up for the fact that they have not completed any contracts up to this point. All right, now they can get money for their excess fish. Their one sardine will not get them anything. Their two herring will get them two money. And then their two salmon will get them four money. So that is five money total for the excess fish. And then when they score their cooler, you'll notice that they have five complete columns and five complete rows. So they are going to get the maximum payout of five times three or 15 money. That means they have a whopping 25 money at this point in the game, and now this ice cooler will go to the bottom of the stack, and then the scraps will go to the supply, and the fish tiles will be removed from the game. After that, they will gain a new ice chest, and they are going to put it with this side up. The next thing green has to do is increase their fish up to their tool levels, and this is going to gain them two salmon. The final thing they have to do is refresh these today's catch cards. And now it's time for us to go, and we are also going to go to the market. At the moment, we don't have any scraps to add, unfortunately, because even a sardine would have increased our payout by one, but we just did not have the money for it. Now what we can do is catch this crab. It is fully surrounded, so we can place this onto our board. And then let's go to the market. Now, I think we want to complete this contract here. That is going to take three of our four sardines, two of our three herring, two of our three cod, and one of our two salmon. Now, as you can see, that is in the second column, so we are going to place our first lighthouse token into either this scoring tile or that collection tile up there. Now, these are nice for gaining money and icons, but I don't think we can pass up this option here. That's worth two points to us, and we can automatically gain one of the today's catch cards without spending any fish for it. Now, technically, we have the fish to complete this card over here, but I'd much rather gain it without spending that fish, and this is not going to get us any endgame scoring cannery icons, but it will increase our production of sardines and salmon once. So, our salmon production goes up to 1, and our sardine production goes all the way up to 3. Well, that was technically just one card since we got this as a bonus from that public contract. And speaking of public contracts, I think let's complete a second one for our second card. That's this one here, which requires us to spend one of each fish, and we have one sardine, one herring, one cod, and one salmon left over, so we had the perfect amount of fish to do both of these. Now that means we can put this token down onto this scoring tile, and while this is somewhat tempting, we currently don't have any icons at all. So we could gain one of these and then realize it's not the icon that we actually wanted. So I think instead, let's go onto this tile over here. And I think let's increase our sardine production once again. That is also going to be worth three victory points to us. And there's only one scoring spot left on this tile. Of course, if you complete these contracts after this is full, you can still place scoring tokens onto the collections tile at the top as long as there is room up there. So let's increase our sardine production again, and it is one away from the top, and that means we're going to automatically make four sardines at the end of this market phase. Now that's pretty great when you consider some of the higher level public contracts need quite a few sardines. This column three needs four, and this column four card needs six, while this one needs three. So having a production of four means we could potentially get up to this one even easier, and this one would already be covered. So having a bunch of production will allow us to score some of those higher level columns, which of course don't currently have these tokens in them, so we have a wider variety of options, and of course those higher scoring options are also just worth more points. Well, at this point, if we had any excess fish, we would sell it for money, but we used all of our fish, and now we can get paid out for our ice chest. We have zero completed columns and three completed rows, so three is the bigger number, and that is going to gain us nine money. Next up, it's time to get rid of the old ice chest and gain a new one, and this is our option. Now, I think I like the idea of this one. There's an ice cube next to the crab, whereas this one has nothing next to it. Although, of course, that ice cube does limit our build options, but I think this one is still going to be fine. The next thing that we have to do is gain fish equal to our tool levels. So we gain one salmon, one cod, one herring, and four sardines. Finally, we can flip up this today's catch card, and this is a red card. It says for three cod, you get those two cannery icons. 
Well, it looks like we are all done taking actions. So at this point, we would normally repopulate the ocean by removing all of these tiles and then dealing more out. We could then have this navigate and we would decide where it would go and then we'd move into the next round. Now I say that's what we would do because I think this is a good time to stop playing through the game. At this point, I've shown you about half of the game and you should now have a decent idea of how the game flows. That means this tutorial is coming to a close, and I do hope that you've enjoyed learning how to play Public Market. Now, I am curious about what your favorite part of this game was, so if you'd like, then feel free to let me know down in the comments. As always, I'd like to thank everyone who's been supporting this channel, including these producer-level Patreon supporters. If you too would like to directly support the channel in the creation of future videos like this one, then please go to jongetsgames.com support. Also, if you enjoyed this video, please click the like button for it down below, as well as the subscribe button for the channel. Thanks for watching.